Our guest, Sneha Kamari, is a Six Sigma Certified Green Belt Supply Chain Manager with over nine years of experience improving customer metrics by reducing costs. Sneha has led a team of 50 plus associates and her experience includes Crane Fluid Handling, Schneider Electric, and Honeywell. Sneha is a Transaction Kaizen Tool Champion and led 10 Kaizen events implementing process improvement tools driving efficiency while achieving both cost and time saving for the business. In this episode, we talk about the following. What does Six Sigma imply? Who should be using Six Sigma? What are the critical factors to having a successful implementation? How do you use lean concepts to eliminate waste? How are lean and circular concepts similar or dissimilar? And now with you, your host, Marcia, and our amazing guest, Sneha Kumari. Good morning, Sneha. A pleasure to have you on the show. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me on the show, Marcia. Very good morning to you and everyone who is watching. A pleasure to be here, share something from my experiences, and talk to you. We look forward to that. And we have heard the introduction from Ryan, but it would be great if you could make a brief introduction of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would actually um, start from the beginning. So I actually uh, was born and raised in India and um, I started my career as an engineer uh, with Honeywell and Schneider Electric. And um, then I did my MBA. I um, graduated in supply chain management and um, I started working for manufacturing and uh, for a manufacturing company here in Los Angeles. And I actually um, have worked uh, from end to end supply chain. So starting from procurement to moving to tactical parts of supply chain, which is demand planning, uh, inventory, um, a lot a lot there, you know, planning, managing, forecasting numbers there, managing the entire warehouse fulfillment activities, including reverse logistics. And um, very recently I'm working and managing the manufacturing operations day in, day out, understanding how all these small supply chain pieces work together to bring that product to our customers. And it's been fun. It's been fun managing both strategic and tactical functions of supply chain and um, use a lot of data, uh, which is show about a lot of data to drive decisions and uh, work on projects, exciting projects, new launches, and in fact, sustaining businesses as well. And very recently, I am very personally passionate about um, circular supply chain. I've been volunteering, um, doing some volunteering with the supply, circular supply chain network and uh, meeting a lot of great individuals around the, across the world and um, seeing how companies are doing because um, that's the way to go. That's what uh, we want our industry leaders uh, to work towards and um, change the way we have worked for the past so many years. Yes, yes, and you have such a great accomplishment and also the work that you are doing with the Circular Supply Chain Network with Debra is fantastic. So. I'm sure Thank we are you. going to learn, yes, greatly here. So first to, to start, what is um, Six Sigma? Because we have heard many times in particular in, in manufacturing and you are an engineer in your background. Yeah. So what, what does love. it imply? No, absolutely. Would love to share a little there. So, uh, I mean, um, I would tell you, I was introduced to Six Sigma way early in my career when I was actually in Honeywell. I was certified since then. And I did it again um, uh, when I was in my MBA school. Um, I, I like to start with um, a quote that Jack Welsh um, usually says about Six Sigma, that it's a program uh, which, when all said and done, helps improve your customer experience lower your costs and build um, better leaders. Um, I would like to take some part of it and just share what I personally think about Six Sigma. And I strongly believe that it's a data-driven methodology that facilitates, uh, that is used for eliminating defects in any process. And it doesn't have to be manufacturing. It can be any transactional, it can be from products, from any kind of services. And um, 
the higher the standard deviation, the higher the spread of values uh, that you have encountered. So for me, it's more of uh, discipline. It's uh, It definitely requires a lot of um, understanding uh, of the fundamental objectives, what your goal is, what together as a company overall leadership is trying to achieve through this method methodology. Mm -hmm. And there are um, two ways that you could do it. Uh, one is uh, the DMAC way, which is where you define, measure, analyze, improve, and control any system. And the other one is actually for new processes, which is DA, DMA, DV, which is design, um, define, measure, analyze, design, and verify. So that's focused mostly about for the new processes or new products and identifying in, uh, the quality levels through Six Sigma. Um, but yeah, it is mostly, a, it is a very scientific method in which you can go about and uh, work in eliminating defects. But at the same time, um, it is also very customer centric. Mm -hmm. It is very important that the entire leadership is involved in understanding what kind of, uh, what's the goal and then go about executing and hire Six Sigma black belts, um, master black belts to be able to work on your process and make sure that the team understands it. There's a lot of flair around that and we'll talk about it, of course, uh, yeah. more. Yes, and it's great that you mentioned the customer because it's, it's focused on that. And sometimes when we talk about the supply chain, we think only about manufacturing and we don't see any relationship with customers. We always say this is the back end, but yes. supply chain, as a, then of course, we will also talk about a circular supply chain. So yes. it's, it's more than manufacturing. And, and Six Sigma, as you mentioned, right, it's a, it's a system, right? It's a systematic approach. Yes. And the best part is, you know, Marcia, uh, we see here is it, it uses data. It's, it's not just a process that you take in and implement and leave. It, it mm. actually is a more scientific statistical me method where you understand your process, improve for element and improve uh, the process overall, reduce your costs, improve uh, customer experience overall. And then uh, if you see the last part of the DMAC process talks about controlling it. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just do it and leave it. You have to yes. control it. You have to make sure it is sustainable. And I strongly believe for any kind of process implementation, the hardest part comes there where you are able to detach from the process and the process still runs perfectly by itself right with of course minimal issues that's the that's the key part of um, measuring according to me of measuring success or how successful you were in implementing that process and then moving out of it and still uh, making sure that it uh, performs with lesser defects yes so true right because first in the project we put a lot of energy effort and then Six months later, the process may have come to what it was at the beginning. And all the data is not updated, right? When we do all that cleansing of data and then some time goes by and we have the same issue. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So, and Sinihei, in your, in your view, what are the aspects that you like the most and the least about Six Sigma? Very, very interesting. And, uh, you know, I've done it twice uh, in my career in Six Sigma, and um, there are certain aspects that I do like about it. But then I, my personal approach has always been, you know, agile making mm -hmm. sure that um, whatever processes or whatever projects we're involved in, it should always, we should always be looking for flexibility. And again, the, um, the very, the most important part is, as I said, controlling it, sustaining it for good. Mm -hmm. So when you leave it, it, it is able, we are able to sustain it. So um, firstly, like, uh, as I said, like Six Sigma is often thought of uh, something that you do in manufacturing or, it's a total quality management system. And I would really like to put it out there that it's it has evolved over time. Mm -hmm. it, and I believe that it's a way of, um, it's it's a way, it's a strategy of how you, you want to do your business. It's a lot of things. 
Um, it could be a philosophy. It could be a vision where the company is going um, or just a method that you're trying to use. And it differs from bigger industries to actually smaller industries. Um, for me, it's, uh, you know, it requires a lot of um, um, involvement from people mm -hmm. and a lot of continued adoption and integration of existing tools and whatever practices you have and um, making sure that you have people who are involved actually trained in this. So that's, that's where the tough part comes in because I'm always thinking that, okay, I have, you know, I have some black belts here, green belts here. We are trying to do this project, but we need to understand that when we are doing this, we are touching, we should always touch people who are actually executing the process and they understand it. Yes. Because any kind of misunderstanding in this whole Six Sigma um, method can be a serious bottleneck to its adoption, application, and then you totally fail when it comes to the control phase. Mm. Yes. Um, and that, and that's, that's the key. And that's what I feel. Uh, I mean, it's not about me disliking it, but it's about how uh, companies are going, adopt, going about in adopting this and implementing this and applying this to these uh, to their business uh, processes. Because as I said, like it involves looking at a lot of large amounts of data and it's it's time consuming. It mm -hmm. takes money because you're hiring, uh, either mm -hmm. you have internal black belts or you're hiring master black belts um, to actually help you improve the process. And if you're hiring from someone from outside, um, it's even more complex because then you you have them you have them come in. They need to understand your processes. Mm. Some pre work that has to be done. So there's costs involved. There's time involved. And so if we do not have a plan, a timeline, and make and a good solid implementation plan, that's where I see companies fail. Ah. And mm. I I strongly believe that it's always good to go about making sure if that's the philosophy, if that's the strategy what you want to go towards, making sure that your team, you have a good strong team internally who is uh, who understands Six Sigma and also cultivating that mindset, that culture within the company yes. that why are we, what's the purpose? Why are we trying to do this? Why do we want to implement this? Why it is very important for our customers and to run our business internally for reducing costs or um whatever your strategy or um you know needs are so yeah. the adoption part is the critical part in this process and um large companies uh, i know that when i uh, was doing it at honeywell their goal was to actually get everyone six sigma mm -hmm. certified because they wanted to cultivate that mindset at that point in time so i mean they have to provide a lot of trainings to employees to make sure they understand and grasp the system yeah. and believe in it and I think this is the essence of any process. I mean, it's not just six mm. sigma. It's a, talk about agile processes. Talk about uh, lean concepts. It's not a one size fits all approach. Yes. Um, you know, if and if you try to do that, uh, it can limit you in, uh, mm. in the possibilities that it can, or even the um, creativity. It limits you there. Yes. So would you say that that um, change? in culture and the planning are the most critical factors to have a successful implementation? Yes, no, absolutely. Um, planning and uh, and that's why I said that you, um, you know, leadership or whoever um, is the sponsor who is trying to mm. implement this should have a clear understanding of what the project is, where exactly we want to implement this. But at the same time, overall, what is the vision? Mm. Um, do we have to do this just for this one or do you want to go about that's the route that the company wants to tread towards because they are very focused on quality but the possibilities are immense if yes. you do if it if it is done correctly it just uh, improve improves your customer experience and internally for yourself as well it reduces waste and i mean not waste actually it reduces costs for you a lot so it, the goal is to minimize variation Yes. And you could do a lot when implemented correctly, but making sure people adopt it, understand it, it's important. Not everyone understands it correctly. Yes, yes. No, the, those are great points. And, and when a company starts with Six Sigma, because you mentioned that at Honeywell, the objective was to have every employee with uh, Six Sigma. At the time. Yes. 
So where do you start in, in which area you think because supply chain is very broad and you have been in all the areas so that's that's great that, that is a perfect question for you yes. which which of the areas you think is like the most appropriate to start with six sigma implementation that's um uh, and if you ask me i and as i said like in the beginning it it applies everywhere wherever mm. you want you're looking for any kind of um, waste you want to keep your cost low but at the same time improve your customer experience uh, six sigma is something that you could take in apply and um, get great results um, i often use lean six sigma this whole concept together because lean is targeted as you know eliminating um, wastes and Six Sigma is eliminating variation. That's the difference between them. But then together, they bring a lot of efficiency in supply chain in many, many aspects. And supply chain is very broad. We're talking about strategic. We're talking about tactical stuff. And in tactical, there's a lot of um, processes there. But for example, like if you want to reduce your order fulfillment cycle time and um, uh, you want to bring in, um, you can very well bring in the whole Lean Six Sigma concept there and uh, identify what are the root causes, what are the problems, where um, any kind of improvements be made. If you want to go towards automation, if you have a lot of manual uh, processes, very well, go ahead. You can do, you can adopt Six Sigma there, see what, uh, what can be there, done there. Um, talking about, um, say, uh, any kind of um, improving uh, supply chain flexibility. So I'm talking about, you know, all the wastes that we have when we are looking at any kind of motion, transportation, over product, over production, over processing. Mm. So looking at all kind of wastes that we um, uh, look at in the lean concepts and finding the processes where we'll be able to uh, control it mm. and go in there and reduce the um, a probability of errors if you ask me everywhere whether it's from planning standpoint or logistics processes reverse logistics processes the entire production processes whatever um, uh, production process that you are doing to if you are a manufacturing company mm -hmm. or if you are following any kind of processes from um, for say uh, planning demand planning or as i said order fulfillment you could definitely go in there and look for opportunities where you can reduce the errors. Great, great. So yes, as you mentioned, there are many opportunities and it applies to all areas. So, and yes. Sneha, how do you apply the concept of lean, the lean concept that you have been talking to actually reduce waste? Oh, lean is... Um lean is huge there's so much uh, to mm -hmm. lean but i would say that the core um idea is eliminating waste continuously mm -hmm. continuous improvements yeah. from and from the processes that you're involved in now waste has a lot of uh, has has uh so when i talk about waste there are like um used to be seven it's now eight categories of waste that lean uh, proposes that should be looked at and uh, work towards continuously uh, improving it. It was actually, um, this whole concept was uh, developed by Tai Chi Ono and uh, uh, when Toyota was actually facing um, uh, issues and uh, they were not being that competitive. So it started uh, way back and Toyota led this whole uh, concept of lean. They're still doing it, but um, it again, as I said, it also, talks about a lot it also needs a lot of culture change mm -hmm. mindset change and making sure that the um, people who who are engaged in this whole process understand it and I keep saying that uh, again because it is very important for the success of any kind of mm -hmm. process project implementation or concept implementation until then, unless you have the people who are sitting there and executing it day in day out if you don't have the buy-in from them it's always hard and i'm coming back to what the waste we were talking about so i spoke about uh, transportation waiting overproduction, over processing um, motion 
and um, any kind of quality waste inventory cannot forget that uh, yes. is a huge waste uh, that people uh, do not really realize and um, defects as I said but the eighth one is and I think it's very important is actually uh, unused human potential yes. and this is uh, this has been added very recently so looking at so if you look at all these uh, categories of uh, waste you can go in there there are many different tools that lean provides you at hand like you could do single minute exchange of dye it's a smed process you could do kaizen's mm -hmm. um kaizen uh, have different or you could do just in time events uh, there are some just do it events so there are tools that uh, lean provides you um there is something called pokayok there is uh, yes. there is um, jidoka and standard work root cause analysis five ways five ways there's so many tools that lean equips you with that you could use and go about uh, looking at wastes in any process i mean it doesn't have to be as i said production it can be from hr to any kind of sales process it could be manufacturing i've seen that i've seen um doing uh, i've done actually kaizen and i've been mm -hmm. there in uh, um, from a design if you're working with engineering and trying to look for designs and um, and that brings me back to six sigma where it propagates looking for designs in mother nature and actually getting inspiration from this, which is something that I love about the whole Six Sigma concept. And actually that's something um, um, somewhere, some of the companies are also adopting through the circular economy um, when they are looking at circular economy concepts as well. But yeah, I mean, these are type of based, go ahead. You, it doesn't have to be production. It doesn't have to be supply chain manufacturing. It can be anywhere. Yeah. Trust me, just go ahead, look for the waste. You will always be continuously improving yourself. No, the great examples, great examples, and your explanations, based on your explanations, I have another question. How are um, Lean Six Sigma and circular supply chain or circular concepts, are they similar, different? Absolutely. Uh, actually, um, I, want to, um, I, want to, I want to talk about a, a short, quote that we um, did here in Circular Supply Chain um, Network, where we were talking about how lean is a concept that uh, circular um, economy could look at, learn from, I mean, why reinvent the wheel when you have something to actually leverage from. These two concepts have um, a lot of synergy and mm. uh, a lot of uh, drive and the could actually benefit with each other. But the primary difference is lean talks about eliminating waste and circular uh, economy talks about monetizing waste, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it actually talks about closing the loop, um, which lean doesn't primarily, um, or that's uh, significantly tells about, it's just about looking at your processes and um, just eliminate wastes. So what, as a, now when we are looking at, com, you know, when companies are looking at going towards adopting a circular supply chain concept or circular economy concepts, you have to, uh, they, these two are different, uh, you know, lean in these uh, circular economy are different approaches, but the major common elements is waste elimination and value creation. So converting waste streams to value stream is what circular economy wants and lean wants waste elimination. So um, looking at the, these um, two points and uh, what lean doesn't do is I said closed loop system and circular economy facilitates that. So take those um, points from lean, which is reducing waste, take the tools that lean propagates and start there and then go a step forward and look for how you could close the loop. And it can start, as I said, like circular um, supply chain starts right from the design stage. Have that mindset when you're actually designing your product project. So the waste overall, when it reaches end of life is minimized. You're able to extend the life, reuse it, bring it back to the processes. So um, yeah, I mean, take the waste uh, uh, um, concept from lean, use it in circular economy and try to create value from it. That's mm -hmm. that's how I see it. Lean, definitely something that complements uh, this whole concept yes. of circular economy a lot. Yeah, because I see that there's a point that even you would like to reduce waste, there's still some, 
and I'm thinking about inventory, right? That oh. when they ask me, like, for example, is it possible to have zero inventory? And I say it's no, it. right? Because it, it, it's very risky. It's, <laughs> it is. But I it think very... it's a, right. It's like it gets to a point that you cannot reduce anymore. And that is when I believe circular economy is where you can transform that waste into a stream that is valuable, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, I uh, you would have remembered like uh, this quote: "One man's trash is someone's uh, yes, treasure." treasure. <laughs> right. So this it it it's like perfect. It's perfect of uh, the concept that server economy propagates. Oh, inventory cannot talk enough uh, about that. Mm -hmm. um, look around you. It doesn't have to be industries. As a person, look around yourself. Every single thing is inventory. Yes. And do you really need that? Um, do you re really need so many? I mean, over years, we keep collecting stuff. We have it yes. wherever uh, stored and we don't even know uh, how much we have. So inventory is a huge waste and you know that could be another topic for another day. But as you said, one, so through circular supply chain, you actually can extend the life. You actually can stop yourself from buying more. Um, look on how you can extend the life of uh, products and how you could bring it back to your supply chain. Maybe look for secondary markets where someone else could be able mm. to use it, but it will require a lot of integration within companies, a lot of communication and together companies coming for this whole strategy and working mm. together to implement it because it will start with the bigger leaders and then through the you know the whole value chain, the whole downstream upstream supply chain, it has to go down to our suppliers. It needs customer mindset adoption too, but it has to come from consumers as well. It has yeah. to go both ways. Consumers need to believe in this concept. And at the same time, industries need to work more towards it, create more awareness, have uh, more people buy in into this. Yes. Yes, and, and what is the role that data plays into becoming a circular economy? What data should I be looking at? Because as you mentioned, it involves the customers, suppliers, and the company. Oh, yeah, yeah um, and it, it should start with data. And I say, um, you know, data, not just, you know, looking at data and getting insights, but also when I spoke about design. So <sighs> when I'm talking about uh, design when you're looking into product design what kind of materials you're using mm -hmm. um, very recently I wrote an article of how Dell uh, is adopting diff, um, the whole circular supply chain concepts and looking for different polymer combinations different um, materials or metals that they could use which are more um, which are less wasteful I would say that that's that's the right way to put it so understanding that a uh, plethora of options that you have or innovating at that stage. So that will be very important. So looking at that database of what we have yeah. at hand and how we could leverage it, that it starts there. And then overall in this whole process, we are looking at say, if you're planning uh, for your demand, look at the resources around you, look at uh, what, and that will also require integration of uh, and a communication of what um, kind of, uh, materials are available from different companies that we could bring in in our supply chain in our production processes and use it but look around and uh, see the options that we have uh, that we could use and um, instead of buying new materials if there are any secondary materials that we could leverage so that's another data and then of course having better visibility along your um, uh, supply chain logistics part how you could bring it back and adopt local supply chains as and when. Mm. I mean, that's that's a concept that we have been talking about a lot because uh, um, that definitely is, you know, having a strawberry travel around the world to actually uh, yes. for coming to you. It's, it. I mean, it the the value that went into it, it's, yes. uh, uh, it's, it's a huge waste. The money that yes. goes into just bringing it to you. So adopting local supply chains is definitely a way to go. But data is, is a critical part to actually be successful in this implementation. Yes, and, and the point that you made about having a local supply chain so important in these times, well, we, we live that last year and, and this year we, we are still experiencing the, yeah. the pandemic. But now 
I have read an article that it says like um, local and regional is the new global supply chain. So that is uh, yes. changing, it's changing fast. It is. It is. And what did we do? Like a great uh, mention about the whole COVID scenarios. Uh, it was hard to yes. get things from around the world. Mm -hmm. We did look at our local supply chains. We did go, go to our local suppliers and find our options. And uh, I think a lot of supply chains went about looking at risk management. And I think uh, um, it, it is a huge way to also eliminate and assess your risks, but at the same time, um, fostering local communities, fostering local jobs and being able to support it. Is, it's a unique way to do that as well. Yes, yes. No, the, and the, this is a, a way to mitigate the risk to have a, a circular oh, economy. Absolutely, absolutely. And we saw the, you know, the impact hugely last year when COVID hit us and we are still seeing it. Yes, yes. And Sneha, um, any final thought or the key point that the mm -hmm. audience needs to remember from this episode that it has been great? Oh, yes. Um, you know, um, I would like to, you know, tie in what we spoke about. So we started with Six Sigma and I said it's mm -hmm. uh, about um, looking at your the variation in your processes and eliminating errors. We talked about lean, which is mostly about eliminating waste. And then we spoke about circular supply chain, which is um, way, way to go and to adopt the next step and have closed loops, loop systems. So all as we see, or for the first two concepts talk about talks about eliminating errors eliminating waste circular takes it one step ahead it takes your waste it helps you monetize it it helps you extend the life give a second life to all your materials and i uh, and the trends that i've seen in just the past year the number of industries actually taking the pledge to adopt this whole concept in the next decade two decades has i've seen leaders doing that uh, now it's just about uh, working together and instead of being con competitive, collaborating with yes. each other to bring about, to bring this concept, make it a reality, create more awareness, adopt it and um, see the magic for ourselves. Like the, that helps us build a place uh, which is, you know, with, run your business profitably, but at the same time, um, leave our mother nature uh, in a better place as well. We, we owe that to our future generations for sure. Yes, no, that, that's, that's great. And I, I would like to, to thank you so much for being here and, and for all the explanations that have been very helpful. It has it have been a, a fantastic episode. And what is the best way to reach you for those that they, we want to help more with circularity or if we need your help for about Six Sigma, about the lean? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I would say LinkedIn is the best way to reach uh, me at. Uh, my first name is Sneha. My last name is Kamari. You could very well reach me here on LinkedIn. I'm open to connecting. Would love to um, share whatever I know um, from my experience in manufacturing, Six Sigma, lean, process improvements and now circularity would love to share um, my experiences there but yeah LinkedIn is the best way to reach me and drop me a message send me an invite happy to connect with everyone here thank you so much it's Nika again it has been a pleasure thank you thank you for having me Marcia um, enjoyed talking about all the wasteful processes and value streams uh, look um, look forward to connecting with more Great, thank you.